Um, so the next talk is from uh, Nora Engel, we are not related. Um, and the title of her talk is Vive la Différence, Zooming in on a Sex-Specific Differences in Mouse Embryonic Stem Cells. Hi, um, very grateful to the organizers for this opportunity to show some um, results from a new project that's emerging in the lab. Um, the main interest of my lab is genomic imprinting, so of course sexual dimorphisms such as imprinting are of general interest to us. And nowadays there is increasing interest in sexual biases and differences as they relate to um, disease prevalence, susceptibilities to different diseases or even protection from diseases, and biases with respect to response to therapy. Now, um, the major contribution to this is, of course, hormonal, but hormones don't explain everything, and there is a contribution independent of hormones from the sex chromosomes themselves and products that emerge from them. So to show you some evidence for that, you kind of have to go back in development and take a look at, for example, mortality rates in males, which are higher throughout the lifespan, but even right after birth, so sex hormone independent. Also, pre-implantation embryos in primates, but also in rodents, um, have sex-dependent differences. For example, male pre-implantation embryos uh, develop more rapidly, and this uh, happens up to day 9.5, so before gonadal differentiation. And expression differences between males and females in, in embryos have been found also pre-implantation. Also, patients who have sex chromosome aneuploidies show some congenital defects, um, defects coming from development, which of course uh, points to the importance of dosage of X-linked genes. So we decided we wanted to take a look at this using an embryonic stem cell model, male and female cells. Um, there's a lot of data on embryonic stem cells, but it hasn't been stratified by sex. And these are derived from pre-implantation embryos, and they can be manipulated to undergo differentiation. In our case, we um, differentiate them to cardiac precursors. And of course, what happens in the female cells, as we all know uh, by now, is X chromosome inactivation. And as Jeannie Lee uh, and other labs have shown, this is a massive reprogramming event involving histone modifications, DNA methylation. So aside from dosage compensation, does X chromosome inactivation have effects um, on the transcriptome and on the epigenome on autosomal genes as a downstream effect and independent of dosage compensation is one of the questions we were asking. So our hypothesis essentially is that some sexual dimorphisms can be traced back to the early embryo and that the sex chromosomes themselves are products arising from them leave a registry of sexual identity already. And important concepts for this is to understand that dosage matters, and especially when we're talking about transcription factors and epigenetic enzymes. And the other thing is that you can have latent effects. So for example, genes can be poised epigenetically for activity later on in development. So um, we call this latency of epigenetic marks. So how can the sex chromosomes bias gene expression at an early stage? Well, obviously the Y um, has genes um, that are expressed only in the males. But even if you think about the X chromosome products um, targeting a gene on an autosome, obviously the female has double dosage of these products before differentiation of ES cells and before X inactivation happens. And this can affect um, the levels of activation of a downstream target, or it can even expand um, the targets um, that are susceptible to that product. And even after X inactivation, since there are genes that escape inactivation, you can still have double dosage of those products. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that if there is an imprinted gene or imprinted genes on the X chromosome, um, they might not be expressed, for example, from the maternal chromosome, which is the only one that the males inherit, but in some cells of the female embryo, um, this will remain active and produce a product, right? And of course, downstream uh, effects can lead to uh, transcriptional cascades or repression. Um, if we're talking about epigenetic enzymes, they can have an effect that's more genome-wide, but also affecting the networks that emanate from the sex chromosome. So we want to trace that. Also, keeping in mind that X chromosome inactivation um, in a way makes the X that is inactivated a sink for epigenetic factors. So there's likely to be less availability of epigenetic factors when you, sorry, um, when you inactivate the X chromosome and that potentially has downstream effects also on the autosomes. So we derived ES cells from um, crosses, reciprocal crosses between black six and castaneous mice. So we're looking um, to uncouple strain-dependent effects from sex-dependent effects, and we're not going to talk about the strain uh, effects today, but we have three cell lines that are female uh, for each uh, cross, black six, B, C, castaneous, um, for the males, the same thing, and we also had um, two cell lines which were XO and uh, derived from a BC cross. We differentiate them to cardiac precursors also. I'm not going to show much about that. Do RNA sequencing and try to validate and see what functionality there is um, in expression differences. Now, in line with what Stefan eh, in Jeannie's lab showed, and also um, Fernando's lab. Um, the main driver of differences that we found are, is, is it actually the strain. So that's the main driver of sex, uh, of, sorry, of expression differences. But if you look within each cross, the principal component is sex. So um, the females are, sorry, can we go back? Or can I go back? Oh, I can go back. Um, so all the females, for example, from the BC cross are clustered here. The males cluster down here, together with the XO cells. Um, and this happens for both crosses. Um, if you look at the differences between um, the cell lines, the sexes cluster together when looking at, at uh, a heat map. Um, even though between ES cell lines there's the typical variability. And in total, what we found was there's 400 coding genes that are differentially expressed between male and female embryonic stem cells. Um, 260 of them female enriched. Um, the rest were male enriched. Obviously, uh, a lot of the female enriched about 35% came from the X chromosome, but there were a lot of interesting things um, that I can't, I don't have time to talk about there. Um, there were genes from the X that were enriched in males, actually. We found more than 300 differentially expressed non-coding RNAs and 15 sex-specific splice forms. Um, so, so we were surprised because this is still in undifferentiated cells, right? Um, when you look at the uh, enrichment of pathways in each of these um, sex, sexes, um, the males seem to have an enrichment in proliferation, um, chromatin binding, the wind signaling pathway shows up, and even some of the heart development molecules, so it seems as if they're more poised to differentiate um, earlier than females, and, and that's consistent with the fact that they grow faster, for example. Um, interestingly, and I still don't know what, what to make of this, when you look at female um, pathways, they're enriched in meiotic uh, processes and also, sorry, also in structural chromosome maintenance 
and in addition to a lot of secreted uh, factors. So um, this is interesting and we really want to pursue that. Um, here are, we like to validate stuff and we like functionality. So um, we validated some of uh, our findings and I just want to show you, for example, DNMT3B, more highly expressed in males, um, transcription factors such as GATA4, um, also this one, P57, is an imprinted gene, a cell cycle inhibitor, um, but more highly expressed in, in the males. And um, in the females, we focused on PRDM14. Um, it's an interesting gene because uh, it's required for maintenance of pluripotency in embryonic stem cells and also very important for germline development. And we love germ cells because that's where imprinting happens. But also it's very interesting because, um, as Jeannie mentioned before, the question of how epigenetic factors actually get to their specific spots uh, along the genome is partially answered in this molecule which combines uh, a set domain, so uh, modification of lysines, methylation of lysines um, on histones, and it also has a zinc finger domain, so it does have sequence specificity or, or preference. So at least um, combining those two things, which, which is interesting. And we wanted to follow up on uh, PRDM14, which is higher expressed in female ES cells. So one of the things we did was to transfect um, in a luciferase assay, transfect ES cells, male, female, and exo cells. Um, with an enhancer that's PRDM responsive and check to see if there was differential enhancer activity. And there was. This is the, the female um, activity, males and XOs, which are more similar to, to males. Um, so differential activity, and we wondered how was that happening? Well, this enhancer actually has three different motifs for PRDM. So we did a series of deletions with CRISPR-Cas and um, repeated this experiment. And what we found was that if you have the three motifs, the enhancer activity is still higher in the female cells than in the male cells. But if you delete just one of the motifs, then the female cells look more like male cells. So they still have enhancer activity, but it goes down to the level of the males. Interesting. So higher dosage of PRDM14 does make a difference when it's activating at least this specific enhancer, but it seems as if the number of motifs or their uh, relative location might have um, important contributions, too, to this differential enhancer activity. And there's much more to be done also to look at repressors, um, because PRDM, depending on who it complexes with, can also repress um, gene activity. So in a way, we feel that PRDM does fit in at least partially to the initial hypothesis that I showed you, although we still don't know why um, it's expressed more highly in female cells than in male cells. Um, that requires a lot more work, but uh, we can see downstream effects of higher enhancer activity, which is one potential mechanism by which um, it acts. Now, um, when we differentiate ES cells to cardiac precursors, we found, as expected, a lot of genes that are upregulated in common in both male and female ES cells. Um, but there are some that are enriched, upregulated and enriched in females and in males. That's um, pretty interesting. And some of the genes that had been differentially expressed in, in males and females before differentiation persisted in their differences after differentiation. And one of the curious things was that the ones in the females that were differentially expressed before and after um, have no CGIs, no CPG islands in their promoters, whereas the male ones do. So we're still looking into that to see if that holds true with more genes, of course. 
Um, so in conclusion, there are many differences, uh, surprisingly a lot of differences to be detected with RNA-seq between male and female um, ES cells before differentiation with epigenetic and tra uh, factors and transcription factors among them. Dosage is important, it seems, and after differentiation, some of those differences persist and some arise de novo. So what we think is that expression differences probably go through some bottleneck. Of course, um, they become more similar between males and females because uh, likely you do have to create um, the same kinds of hearts and brains in, in both males and females. But potentially, the epigenetic differences aren't that restrained and could uh, be maintained through development for um, foreshadowing effects later, later on in life. So I'd like to thank my, my, my guys here. They're very feisty. Um, my MD-PhD student and wonderful undergrads, also former lab members, and um, also these guys who do so much for our research. Thank you. So unless if there's a one short question, very short. So I, I don't know if you looked at the relative efficiencies of cardiac differentiation, but it strikes me that if the female cells have more PDRM14 that they should possibly more, be more efficient at germ cell differentiation. And I just wonder if you, I mean, and you know, historically we've always used male ES cells because of the obvious reasons for breeding. So I wonder if you've actually made chimeras with the XX cells and compared them to the XY ones. That was my question. No, not yet. Okay, maybe we need to move on. Thank yes. you very much, Nora. Um,